In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a solid node tree in DaVinci Resolve that works for any type of camera footage. And the best thing is, this is the only node tree you're ever going to need to build because I will also show you how you can save this node tree structure and apply it to any other footage or any other project of yours in the future. And the only thing you need to do is tweak and adjust the settings and make it work for that project. Don't worry. We're going to build this node tree structure from scratch so you can follow me step by step through the process. If you're excited about that, let's jump in. All right, guys. So here we are in DaVinci and I've already loaded some of my S-Log3 footage into the timeline. If you have other footage, it doesn't matter for now. Just put it into the timeline and then we check our color management. So go in the right bottom corner onto the wheel and we have a look at the color management and the color signs should be on DaVinci YRGB. The timeline color space should be always our working color space, which is DaVinci White Gamut. If it's not set on that, put it on DaVinci White Gamut. The output color space always should match our display color space, which is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 in my case. So if it's set on that, you're fine to go. If not, put it on these settings and then click Save. For me, I just click Console and close the window. Now we go to the color tab and if you can't see any nodes here, you just click on the right hand corner up here. If there's not a node visible at the moment. You can just click on here and say add node, add serial, and then you need to connect them. If there's already a node, you're fine to go. So, but in the beginning we need two nodes. So we right click on it and say add node. You can always just do that by press option S, which adds a serial. And the first two nodes are basically our color space transforms. This helps us to transform our color space into our working color space and back from the working color space into the display color space. I've made a video that explains that in detail. If you haven't checked it out, I put a link in the description. So first thing, we add a color space transform on the first node and then when it's marked, you should see this window. And what we want to do now is change the input color space to our camera color space. And in this case, it was a Sony s 3 Cine. If you have a different footage like maybe you're shot on a Canon camera, so you have C-Log or Ari-Log or Fuji-Log, or maybe you've shot it on an iPhone and it's actually a Rec. 709. That can be the case too. Then you have Rec. 709 here. Um, but in my case, it was a S-Log3. So the gamma is S-Log3. And then we transform it into our working color space, which is the DaVinci White Gamut, which gives us the widest range to work with. And the gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. And then the last node basically transforms it back. So we put on another color space transform, which is from DaVinci White Gamut to Rec. 709 and Gamma 2.4, which is our display color space. And now you can see it looks already so much better. And this is basically what the camera was seeing on that day. The colors look correct to me. Contrast, everything is nice. And now the basic grading all works underneath this color space transform. So we're working in this field. So to do that, we add more serials. So you, so you can just right click add node or you just go option S and add a few serials and let's add four serials. And to keep it all sorted, I will start labeling the nodes. So the first one is our color space transform from s -Log to DaVinci White Gamut. If you have other footage, you can of course label it in the way that it is correct for you. The first node, I always start with exposure and balance, which is one of the most important primary adjustments. Next node, I label contrast and saturation. Then with the next node, we want to add a parallel 
Um, you can also just click on add node and say add parallel also with option P. So we add four parallels and the first one I label as temperature next one could be HDR for highlights next one is curves and this could be maybe warper but you can add as many as you like this is basically our primary grading and you need to be aware that you don't need to use every single node in this node tree it's just a reminder for you to stay consistent and go forward in a very methodical order while you do your color grading what we set up now is basically our primary adjustments primary adjustments means basically that the adjustments are done on the full image and as we go forward we maybe want to have adjustments that are not done on the full image but maybe on a mask maybe on a color so forth and this is our secondaries and so we add another serial here and two more parallels so this is our secondaries which are applied to parts of the image. This could be color, this could be the eyes, for example, this could be the lips, this could be a t-shirt, this could be anything. Um, some call it power windows. I will call this mask one, mask two, mask three. In the end, we might want to apply a film look, which is quite popular, but the problem here is that most people apply a film look to totally wrong. So this is our color space transform. We want to label this so we have an overview. So this is our Da Vinci white gamut to rec 709. And so this is already a very solid node tree. And please be aware that you don't need to work with all of the nodes in your node tree. It's just a reminder for you to go forward in a very methodical order while you do your grading. And what's very popular is to add a look node here. So we add another serial. Actually, we, do, we add two serials here. So now we apply one of these film looks and now you can see it looks terrible. It's way too strong. And a mistake that many people do now is they just go on key and then change how strong the look is used but that's not the correct way to do it um, what we need to do to fix this problem is add another color space transform because these film looks they work with another gamma curve so if you go right click on it and say reveal in finder it will show you the file in finder and then you can go another right click and say open with text edit and then it basically says that the input is Sinian lock. That is something we need to be aware of and change here in our node tree. So this one needs another color space transform because it gets fed by this um, color space transform from Da Vinci white gamut to Rec 709. And now we're gonna take this input Rec 709 and gamma 2.4 and the output is still rec 709 but the gamma is sinian lock so so we add another color space transform which is into sinian lock so now we've changed the settings here um, and the output gamma is sinian film lock and now you can see it looks so much better already and um, we have smooth skin here um, I think it looks amazing and to have more control um, and to have a better overview we want to label this node which is Sinian log what we can do now is put these two into a compound node and I will label this compound node as look so and the good thing about it is now you can just press on this compound look and then really go on keys and change how strong it is used and now you can see it's really working just fine all right so this is now our node tree structure um you can always go and right click and say show compound node then you can see what's behind here and we can also label this this is a lut 
and if you want to change this LUT you can just go right click and say LUT and then go on film looks and change it to a different one this is a more cooler one of the Kodak 2383 I actually really like this one um, to make this basic notary workable for you although you might have different footage than S-Log3 you can just change the settings here um, in this color space transform and switch it to your input color space and then everything should work for you as well then we can go forward and actually grade our footage and first thing is we go on exposure we might um, we go on HDR and change the exposure we might want it a bit brighter we go on contrast um, we add a bit of contrast here and then we can see it gets a bit too much saturated so we want to change the saturation and pull that down a bit so this looks quite good to me but now you might ask how can I apply this notary to a different project here comes the, the nice thing you can just go right click and say grab still and then it saves it basically here on the gallery you can find the saved stills which is basically a screenshot of the image but it also has all of these adjustments and notes included and you can also label these ones and you can also go on export and then save note tree to your hard drives and then later on just pull it into DaVinci, import it and then apply it to all of your other footage. If you want one node disabled and not active, you can deactivate it by command D and then the look is deactivated and you can also save it that way and apply a certain type of grading for a clip without that specific node or with it active so this also saves lots of time this is our basic note tree that you can just save to your hard drive and use for any of your projects you just need to adjust your input color space to your camera profile and then you can also of course add a few notes if you need them like you might like another note here which is for grain and texture and then you go on the still which is saved here and say export and export it onto your hard drive and later in a different project you can just import it or pull it into DaVinci and then use it for any other footage then you can work with this basic notary and take it from there and of course add some serials where you need them you can also take some away if it's too much for you but it's always a good thing to have this and go step by step through the notes and see what you can do this will really help you to have a consistent grading workflow if you found this video helpful please leave me a like or consider subscribing more creation lessons are coming i hope i see you in the next one bye bye